Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. So today I'm going to be doing a little celebration and that is for Linux gaming, specifically here in Steam. So more than a year ago on August 21st, 2018, Valve introduced a huge update for their Steam Play. And that update was actually Proton. And what Proton is, is it's basically a compatibility layer that's based upon something called Wine which allows Windows applications to actually work in Linux. And so what they did here was allowed people who were on Linux to play Windows games that were not specifically made for this platform. And now a year later, we have actually over 6,000 confirmed games, but actually from all the users out there, they've reported over 9,000 games that actually work. And this site collects a lot of data from users out there. And so to celebrate that, let's go ahead and play some Windows games in Linux through Steam today. And so my game of choice today is going to be Cuphead. And this is something that was not natively available in Linux. It's still not natively available in Linux. But thanks to this Proton layer, I'm now able to enjoy this awesome game. Now, I'd have to say that I am not an expert at this. I'm horrible at this game. Uh, but this is something that I never thought would be possible. Um, I knew that we had wine a long time ago. And for anybody who's been using a Linux for a long time, uh, they'll know that that is probably the biggest frustration for a lot of people in using Linux is that they could not play games, you know, games that they would normally enjoy on Windows. And there's not really a fault to the developers out there because, you know, this didn't make economic sense. Because when Linux, you know, first came out as an operating system back in 1991, the platform was still growing, you know, and obviously Windows is the largest platform, uh, Mac is the second. And so as a developer, you know, it didn't make financial sense for you to actually spend the money to develop for a platform that didn't have a large user base. So that made sense. But nowadays in our modern age, that has really changed a lot. Um, I've done many videos on this and I've actually have a playlist where I talk about making the switch from Windows or Mac over to Linux if that's something that you want to do and there's very few things that are lacking in Linux nowadays you know but the one big thing that has always been lacking is gaming specifically modern gaming now I myself I love playing retro games and so for me I never really was too big on modern gaming however that was something that I kind of felt like, well, you know, if I want to play modern games, I'm kind of stuck, you know, I'm going to have to use Windows, you know, either I'm going to have to dual boot, you know, on my computer, you know, have my hard drive partition, or I'm going to have to keep a separate Windows machine around when I really want to play the newer games. And that really sucked, you know, and, and I am not personally a fan of using uh, Windows for everyday use. Uh, I still use Windows for certain things. But most of my operating system use, 99% is all Linux and all the software that I need is already available in Linux. You know, obviously there are certain programs that I still cannot use in Linux. I still need Windows for, but it's a very small percentage. But gaming was a huge percentage. And so while everybody, including my brothers, were enjoying all these new games on Windows, I, through Steam, I couldn't, you know, and the games that were natively available on Linux through Steam, they were very few and far between, you know, so I couldn't enjoy things like Doom or in this case Cuphead or Yakuza, but now I can, you know, and the great thing is uh, with this compatibility layer, with all the work that the team at Wine and Valve have done, my overall experience, it's, it's not lacking, you know, and in terms of like things like frames per second, of course, I'm not going to get the top performance but most of the games that I play I get like 60 frames or more per second uh, especially on games like Doom you know that require a lot more graphics power you know with things like the Vulcan API you know I'm getting like 60 to 70 frames per second on ultra settings and my graphics card is like I think about two years old so that is awesome for me you know and I think for a lot of people who just want to play some Windows games in Linux, that is huge. You know, now if you are a professional gamer, of course, you know, you're gonna be playing on the platform that is has this, you know, these games optimized the most, and I get that. But I think for the majority of people, they just wanna use their operating system every day to do normal stuff. Things that we kind of take for granted 
you know, when we are on a platform that's not completely supported, you know, um, and once again, that's no fault to the developers, but nowadays, a lot of people are, you know, on Linux in terms of software, you know, and with the web and internet browsers, that whole difference in platforms, it's becoming less and less, where it doesn't really matter what platform you're on. It just matters like what program you want to use, and I think that is what it should be, you know. Now, obviously, <laughs> I can't speak for all the development teams out there, but I think for all of these software being available on platforms like Linux as well, that means you have more customers. So, so developers, uh, these companies, any other software, they are making more money in the end as well. And so that's always a good thing. And I think that's where these developers want it anyway, you know, but obviously they can't do it alone. And with companies like Valve, with their Steam service, and with the people at Wine doing things like this, um, this is awesome. You know, this really makes me happy to be a computer user uh, because now I don't have to choose. I just choose, you know, what programs I want to use, you know, and uh, that's awesome. And at the same time, you know, I can really fully enjoy my computing experience, you know. Now, obviously, there are still programs that are missing in Linux, you know, things like Adobe um, and there's Windows specific. There's a lot of Windows specific thing programming uh, drivers that I would love to have. But compared to my experience of using Linux originally, uh, more than 10 years ago, this is like a dream for me. And the gaming part, this is huge. This is really huge. And now, you know, with over 9,000 current games and consistently growing every day, I, I'm going to probably play games even more <laughs> now uh, because I've been missing this for so long. Uh, so for me, this is awesome. As somebody who just wants to use this computer every day, I don't care too much about the technical stuff anymore like I used to. I just want to use my computer, you know. And with things like this, this makes that decision a lot easier. I enjoy this so much more. And at the same time, I'm able to help out the developers as well. All these people who work really hard to produce this software, uh, they now have the opportunity to, you know, earn more money for their work across all platforms. And I think that's a win-win. And then for gamers out there, uh, we can enjoy our games and we can also play with other people on other platforms. And the weird thing is, you know, Linux is now the second platform that we can play this gaming on. Now, Mac is not as well supported for games still, which is kind of weird to say that. And so uh, if I had to think objectively, uh, Linux actually has more support, you know, overall. So that's pretty awesome. I'm really happy to say that. Uh, Windows is still the primary platform. Uh, but, you know, as I stated a little bit earlier, there's not much that I am missing. And so that is it today. I just wanted to celebrate uh, this Proton layer, uh, celebrate gaming on Linux, playing Windows games in Linux. And I look forward to all the future improvements that the teams are going to make on this. And it's going to be even better. So if you actually had any thoughts on this, whether you have uh, gamed, Windows games in Linux, or maybe you've been a long time Linux user who's been used to using Wine, uh, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me, and you wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then check out my Go Content Creators Group, where you'll get access to 30 videos plus additional content for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators group. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com and I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.